This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Richard. How are you? What's going on? Happy, happy After Thanksgiving podcast. How exciting that we have you here. Well, I know it has been, it's been, a, it feels like it's already Christmas. <laughs> I know how it's like, you know, zipping by. It's just crazy. But uh, how was your Thanksgiving, by the way? Did you do it a lot was, of dishes? It was lovely. I did a lot of dishes. Yes, I did. I did plenty. But um, it was it was not as stressful as it normally is. And I realized I was like, oh, yeah, my mother-in-law is not here. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we delete that from the podcast in case We're you can go see her? We're going to go see her in Pennsylvania. She's fine. It was probably less stressful for her, too. So. We lo- exactly. We love her. And we love the fact that, you know, she brought you your husband, Freddie. We love that. That's all so cool. Yeah. Yes. So- all right. Well, I know I don't have you for a long time today, but let's see. Uh, why don't we ask Luana, our friend on the flip side, our moderator of our podcast from the other side, if she's got someone on her list or something she wants to talk about. I love that we just pass it off to her. Okay. For everybody else, Luana. There you go. Down on. Um, she's putting you in my mind's eye. So let's see where that goes. Does she Uh, want me to, uh, I, you know, bring guests forward that I was thinking about, or does she, she said happy holidays for starters. She's like, happy holidays, Richard and your wife and your family. Um, she wants to talk about your next book that's coming out. Next book. She wants to talk about there's Luana there with her friend, Michael Goff, who was in all Tim Burton's movies. Um, all right, we can talk about that next book, which I haven't talked about to anybody, including you. I know. Is it hacking, the, is it hacking, is it? hacking the Afterlife 4? <laughs> no, something completely a little bit off the beaten track. But let's ask her, Lou, what do you want to talk about it? I mean, as opposed to me touting, you know, I got into the book. Well, Amelia just came in. Amelia Earhart? Mm-hmm. Very good. Hold on. Please. She said that you had a meeting or you had something set up. It feels like a couple weeks back you talked to somebody regarding her. Uh, well, I've a couple of weeks back, we did have a conversation about a film, uh, not about her, but another film. Is so, it somebody that was interested in Amelia or that you worked together on Amelia? With- well, she has popped into my consciousness in the past couple of weeks, I must say, which is, you know, I suddenly get a ding or a zing or a, you know, a a zhuzh. And I think to myself, I've got to work on that. I've got to figure that out. And then sometimes I think if when that happens, I think, gee, I wonder if somebody out there is thinking about, you know, doing something and and that's why she, so let's ask her, what is it that she wants to talk about? I mean, you know, not everybody gets a chance to talk to Amelia Earhart. So if she's here, what do you want to say, Amelia? she says she wants to, she really wants her real story to come out. Okay. And for those, now's the time. Now's the time for it. Now's the time for it. No, for those who are tuning into us for the first time or the last time, uh, we've had a number of conversations with Amelia and I have worked on her story for about 30 years, way before I met Jennifer And I'm pretty familiar with what happened to her, where her plane is, where her body is, as weird as that sounds. Um, Who she was in love with. Who she was in love with and and why. Sorry? Her lovers. Her lovers (laughs) and her journey. And it's an amazing story and it's never been told. So what can I say other than I think it's just one of the most wonderful stories that really could anybody could ever because it's not what you think it is it's it's like the untold story about jesus the untold story about amelia it it is the untold story about amelia Earhart and what you know what her journey was and and she was so advanced and so ahead of her time and she's the person who created the equal rights amendment who you know really fought hard and long for women's rights and you know here we are talking about her 70 some years later after she supposedly disappeared 
Anyway, um, so Amelia, anything you can do to help move that along? Luana, is that what uh, you, you wanted to do? Or did it, Amelia yeah, it's, about, it's about paying attention. It's okay. Hold on. It's going back. Thank you. It's going back to where time does not exist, even though like out of time. So she knows that you're going to do a story. That's what she says. Okay. So that, those little those little hints that she's been giving you for thinking about her have to do with a meeting later on. How well, so this and this is for the audience listening in, and this is how you do this. And so I'm going to now ask uh, my friend on the flip side, Luana, a question, and. And it relates to what she said earlier, which is uh, she wants to talk to you about your next book. Now, I have a book in mind, but she didn't want to talk about that. And what she did was she then brought Amelia in as if to say that should be your next book. Is that correct? That's what I'm asking Luana. So yes. that's what she wants to say. And you see, this is how Jennifer and I work. We've been doing this for eight years together. So when Luana says she wants to talk to you about your next book, she doesn't mean the one you're working on. She means what you should be working on. Something like that? Okay. Yes. All right, very good. And so let me ask you this, Luana, because it is a, and again, this is for the audience tuning in. You can ask your loved ones on the other side for help <laughs> in format. Go ahead. For timing purposes. Well, she, she he said, okay. She says, Luana says, that you are you're you're gonna write many books, but right now the focus should be on Amelia because on this the, one. Okay, the that's very good. So and then the, the next question that I have, and again, this is why I bring it up. It's a process issue and a question. So should I focus on the story as it came to me, as I know it related to me, Richard discovering this stuff, or should it just be about Amelia? as best as I can in terms of her story and what, which one? About you. Me. Because, yeah, they're showing me, they're showing in my mind's eye, they're, they're showing me how all of these things happened, even with us discussing it. They, she, I believe that that's part of it too, how we found out on this side, talking to her on the other side, just like, you know, the interviews with Jesus. Yes. And for those who aren't familiar with that, there Jennifer, so the first time we met, Jesus showed up in the office that we were talking at. I, my brain, my pea brain was trying to figure out uh, how could that be? And so we invited him to come closer and Jennifer burst into tears and couldn't breathe. And instead of, of just allowing it, super bad. I, you're, so I grilled him about that, why he was causing people to get sick when he showed up in a room. I put it that way to see if that was a challenge. And he said, I brought more of source to my lifetime. And that's why people have that effect. They feel the profound, unconditional love. It was such a profound answer that I realized Jennifer couldn't be making that up because she was crying. Yeah, and, and it's people, coming through again. And I don't remember, you know. So, and, and so it ultimately, uh, David Kirkpatrick, former head of Paramount Studios, reached out to me and said, hey, I've heard about these stories about you talking to people who claim to talk to Jesus. You should write a book. It took me a number of years. It's called The Greatest Story Never Told, as told by Jesus and those who knew him. And it's not my opinion or theory or belief. It's filmed interviews with people like Jennifer, other people, friends of mine who spontaneously while we're doing a guided meditation say i don't even know how to say this because i don't believe in him but he's here so uh and for the christmas holidays if you really want to blow some people's minds that would be a great gift to give them <laughs> hey look at this grandma <laughs> anyway i joke i do have to say that my mom has been reading all the books again that you've oh. written she just she it's really helped her a lot you know so if my mormon mother can read all the books with all the stories she's like there's no way jennifer could have known that <laughs> that is so sweet to hear um you know listen jennifer has such an amazing gift and she shares it every week with me i mean for eight years it's insane and the fact that i'm able to actually turn a camera on and just listen to her talk to people on the other side now of course, you know, she's interpreting what's going on, just like we just showed you, you know, Amelia's here, your next book, 
and then you know that that becomes hey maybe you should write just about amelia and your experience with her which really helps me immensely because instead of worrying about trying to tell a story that puts all underlines all the you know the data and the research and what this guy said and that theory instead of doing that i can just tell my story this is the weird story i have you know for 30 years i researched her and my girlfriend in high school was the one who said to me, you really should uh, make a movie about Amelia. Anyway, and here we are talking about her, you know, yeah. s- about how many years later since that conversation? Abby Adams, my <laughs> school girlfriend who wrote me a letter after seeing Limit Up and said, you know, no one's ever made a film about her. Now they've made a couple of them and neither one tell her story. And so this is why we're still having this conversation about her. And Jennifer and I have asked her so many specific questions about what happened, where she is. Jennifer, after I got back from Saipan, actually drew a map of where I had been two weeks earlier, clear as a bell. You were standing here, you were standing there. That's where she was. That's where she's buried. That's where the plane is. I mean, enough to blow your mind because only I I saw it. Saipan existed, first of all. (laughs) Until <laughs> you're like, hey, well, well, and and listen for for the doubters tuning in. During this interview, I said to uh, Amelia, I had heard that she had been shot or beheaded, and I said, so how did you die? And she said, uh, dysentery. And I said, oh, okay, well, so then where are you buried? And That's then a very glamorous way to go. But then Jennifer says, and I'm sorry to interrupt Amelia. Jennifer says. Oh, those, she's telling me those two soldiers that dug her up, they only found an arm. How could Jennifer know that? But these two guys, Hanson and Burke, reported in the book by Fred Gurner, 1966, that they had dug her up. And so I left the interview with Jennifer and Amelia, my head spinning. Is it possible that I just spoke to Amelia Earhart? The phone rang. An NTSB investigator from Seattle was calling to say he had just looked at some top secret, formerly top secret documents that said, and he said, Rich, everything you've told me about Amelia is accurate, except when they dug her up, they only found an arm. Literally 10 minutes after I heard it from Amelia herself. And then it took me a while, but uh, the Chicago Tribune had written 1977, an article with Hanson and Burks, and off camera, they said, you know, when we dug her up, we only found a partial rib cage and an arm. So, so, so accurate as to be like a hammer over my head. So clearly, listen to your loved ones on the flip side, because they may have something for you to do. Right, and they, they keep stressing to me that it's out of time. So, and it goes back to what we discussed. They're they're actually continuing the conversation where we had with um with uh have them in my head. Um oh my goodness, sweetheart. Uh, uh, I know, Matthew, thank you. Oh Matthew <laughs> Carey, okay, very good. He's just laughing because now he's in the same club as your other friend. <laughs> he's telling me for not ever getting him. Um so the the conversation about how they know things, how they see things out of time, right? And so they prep us as, while we're in our time schedule, they prep us so it'd be a little bit lighter later. Like if you're able to focus on this and then, um, you know, those little hints like, hey, maybe you should start thinking about writing that book about Amelia. Hey, maybe this is a good, good time to do that, you know, and then you know, they could see what could, po- you know, the possibilities of what's going to happen. But now the, t- the t- it's the time is intimate. We have to have it. So, Amelia, what would you like to tell people tuning in who don't believe that this is you talking to us? What, what do you want to tell us or tell people tuning in? I said whatever you believe is right. They're right. Um, <laughs> she's like, well, who else would be saying this? <laughs> He's like making a joke about it. Like she's like, nobody's coming to talk to Jennifer about. She goes, nobody's coming to Jennifer talking to her about me, you know, and writing, having you write a book about me. Like that just, she goes, it doesn't even make sense, really. Um, right. right. The logic behind it is like, why? Because yeah. unless I must have an agent up here that that puts things into a whole different, you know, that was actually kind of funny. Hold on. She's like, tell them not to believe and find out for themselves. 
you know, take your own journey, your own path. She goes, and that's, oh, that's very sweet. She goes, I don't need them to believe. Brilliantly said. Um, and so, you know, that's what if, I have. since we have you on the line, let's call it that, we have you on the cell phone to the flip side, what is it you can tell people? I mean, especially around the holidays, people are suffering and stressing and, and I mean, here you are, it's 70 years, whatever years after you've left the planet um, and your observations. I mean, whenever you come through, you're always, I think, hilarious, funny, charming, witty. Always funny and charming and witty, yeah. And so, you know, what's a good way for people to connect with their loved ones from your perspective? Picture, a photograph, she says. Just like you've said before, stare at a photograph. Huh. Yeah. Instead of thinking that it's separate from you, try to get immersed within it or try to get immersed with it. Like if it's a, if it's something in, you know, a memory in time, of course, in time, a memory that you were a part of, she goes, that's easy. Just go back to that time. And that idea of like remembering the day, what it felt like to be sitting there when the picture was taken. Oh, was it? Yeah. Was it warm? Was the sun hitting your face? Were you smiling? Were you laughing? Were you crying? Were you listening to music? Recreate all of it. She goes, that's what we do over here. Wow. That's very cool. You know, yeah. and, and I must say, Amelia showed up, I don't know how many, maybe months ago with Carl Lemley, the producer. And, you know, all that Jennifer said is she's here with the movie producer. And I went, Oh my God, I knew that Amelia was supposed to make a movie with Carl Lemley, the guy who founded Universal Pictures. And I said, is it Carl Lemley? And she went, tapped her nose and said, that's him. I don't even know who he is, but yes, yeah, I understand. But, you know, and, and then he went on to talk about what it was like for him on the flip side, how it was like creating movies every, every minute, you know, CGI spectaculars and adventures. And he said, uh, somebody got offended by this, but he said, you know, when we get bored over here, that's when we decide to come back. And so, I mean, what a clever thing to say. What a fun way to put it. Amelia, are you thinking of coming back anytime soon? Yeah, she goes, when you're done with your life here, you go back. Like, it's not, you know, hold on. Wow. I said, is it tough to get back there or back here? And she goes, it's extremely tough. And uh, describe why how, or how. What's the process? In a linear fashion, the earth isn't doing well. People are not having as many babies as they used to. Oh, so it's like a, is it like a lottery system a little bit? Like you want to come back and then there's 15 other people ahead of you or? There's, uh, it's not necessarily like that. Like, thank you. Your lives are planned out. It's not like every life just gets planned out. It's like sequential. So it's almost like you really do only have one life, but your life goes in different, jump, is jumping in and out of time, right? Ah, I have the chills. Hold on. Let me see if I can explain this the way that I'm, again, interpreting. Please. She goes, I know when I'm coming back to the second, to the, you know, to who it, who I'm coming back. She goes, it's a bigger plan than what we can conceptualize with our little brains here. So she's aware of her journey and how that's going to work out, and which makes a lot of sense because, of course, you have your teachers, your guides, your council member. You have all these people. You're just not there for one life. It's a coffee stop. They're there for multiple. For multiple. So you're really looking at the overall portrait of all the different performances you're going to have on stage. Let's put it that way. But she's also saying it's difficult to come back because there's so many other parameters that are going or whatever difficulties that are happening on the planet with health with right. things you have to navigate to get there right yes uh, uh, okay. anytime soon or i mean can we look forward to your return the sequel okay. and part of her is already here as a man it feels like okay and for those trying to figure that out we bring a portion of our conscious energy so she may already be back is what you're saying like how what's a percentage that you would give amelia to the conscious energy you have returned as with two percent not Ooh, that much so not that much okay uh, you know some days we, 
Oh, that's interesting. This is interesting because I haven't heard this before. Hold on. There's some lives you lives you get fully immersed in, where you get to take on all of the times that you've been here. So you like more kids, thank you. More kids are coming down here where they tend to know how to sing, dance, they know how to do all the things because they've been here many times, right? They're yeah. able to tap in because people are getting a little bit more open to that, right? And then there's some lives you're just an observer. Observer. And sometimes those are mental issues. People have mental issues or, you know, there's some issue that, go ahead. I can't say it on air. Okay, very good. But but the, I was going to say, you know, people have mental issues. So when you have only 2%, that's like somebody who might be in a coma, might be somebody who's, you know, having a or dementia, might be having a real hard time. But they're only that percentage is, of them is still experiencing life and experiencing. You know, they, might be, they might be here for somebody else. So they might be a child that didn't get born. That's what she's saying here, even though yeah. they were else you know or they might be that person that you know gets in an accident you know at the age of six i mean there's just a lot of um they might not be here for themselves they're here for somebody else to learn a lesson and jennifer and i have had the great unusual fortune of speaking to james dean who told us that he was already back and he mentioned the person who he could come back as and it was somebody we know and it's somebody that we were able to interview but he doesn't really want people to know that about his journey right now. It's just, that's up to him. But, but he came back fully and it was like, he came back to fulfill all the things he didn't get to do or participate in Amelia's case. She got to do quite a bit in her yeah. lifetime. She had quite an adventure. It was her lifetime to be fully immersed in all the things that she wanted to do. Even yeah. by public knowledge or publicly noted. Publicly noted, think different. That was the Apple campaign. And she was the second person that they used in that campaign after Albert Einstein. You just high five, Steve. <laughs> high five, Steve Jobs. Okay, very good. Steve, oh, okay. go ahead. So I'm going to be gone next week. Oh, I know you're going to be gone. That's why I'm trying to squeeze everybody in. So Steve, do you have anything you want to tell the audience tuning in who know that Jennifer can speak to you? Speaking to think different. He says he's proud of me that I haven't, um, I haven't just had, you know, cause he's shown up through several readings and the people have known him, but he's like, I appreciate you not thinking it's me. Not, not think, you know, that I was like dismissing it. it, dismissing it. Cause that's what I used to do. And he's like, you can't do that anymore. How much, how long is it going to take you to realize that you're talking, to, you know? Okay, Steve, I know what your last words were. We've talked about it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I want to ask Napoleon, who Jennifer and I have spoken to before. Can we ask him one question? Can you slip in here, Napoleon? Well, I can't even believe you're calling him forward. Because his last words were reporting for duty as a military guy. And then he said his wife's name and it's in the film they show it in the film what did you think of the movie <laughs> bad doesn't like it i <laughs> thought it didn't show you as i think you're much more intellectual than people remember you as but that moment when you said passion. because i had compassion it just didn't show it didn't show but let me ask you at the last moment is that because you I saw haven't I have not you seen, seen the movie, but the, I'm just talking about in your life. When the last moment of your life, you does it that you saw Josephine? Was she waiting for you? She was running away from me. <laughs> oh, and so he was like calling after her. Hey, Josephine, I'm here because she'd already passed away. But just describe that. What was she wearing? What did she look like? You know, here you are crossing over into back into a memory of when we got married. How happy we were. Beautiful. And I don't even think he was, I don't even think she was happy when she married me, but she became happy. Interesting. And Jennifer hasn't seen the film, but they do deal with that. Really? Yeah. And uh, and we asked you a little bit. Sorry. I promise you I've not seen it. I didn't yeah. even know about He says he goes, No, she was not happy at first, but she grew to love me. And there was a moment that where you we see Betsy Bell Belcom, who was a the young girl that we spoke to who was with you when you passed away. And is it, we got from you that they had given you some, did you just die from cancer or did you die because they gave you cancer? That's the question. Arsenic. Arsenic, yeah. Arsenic. 
That's what okay. he said. You didn't let me even say anything. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, 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 I don't know. And he's like, arsenic. Yeah, they poisoned me. Okay, very. I'm sorry. I didn't and mean slowly. 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 Okay. And was Betsy the person who gave that to you, but not now without her knowledge? I think that's what we asked him before. I He's saying yes, she did it, but she, it's almost like she had to do it against her will or something like that. I'm not even sure. Because her uncle was the person who was taking care of you, of you on that island. And she was, and you used to hang out with her, and I guess she served you your food. So. I, whether she knew or was aware, I don't know. But they do have a little moment in the film where there's Betsy uh, and with with you. What yeah. did you think of Joaquin Phoenix's uh, per, uh, portrayal? Excellent, he says. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, well, that's good. You did mention that you, you felt that Joe Pesci would have played you pretty well because he was like the right... Not now, but yes, before. Before, when he was like a now, tough guy. Yeah. yeah, now seeing, you know... Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, seeing him portray me, he says, much better. Outstanding. Outstanding. Okay, very good. And why? Why do you think so? What? What? Because Jennifer hasn't seen it, but let's ask him. Held his head high, no matter what. I think he held his head high, even though he was losing it. Because even though he was losing it, he portrayed, he portrayed me as a ruthless person who could not be stopped. Even though I, in my mind, I was doing it so we could have order. We did ask him about that. I know Jennifer doesn't remember, but we asked him, like, why did you do such a, you know, you went out try to conquer the world, and you did say that I need. I was trying to help the planet to become more orderly, and you know the way his mind worked. Yeah. But did, was that a mental uh, affliction you had, or was that just ego, or what happened there? All of it, he says. All of it. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. But it was portrayed through ego. Okay. And by the way, the French media has attacked the film relentlessly. They don't like it uh, because they think you deserve more credit. However... They don't like anything American. <laughs> well, that is what that is what the director said. They don't like anything. But they don't like themselves is what he said. So... I have to go. I'm so I know sorry. you have to go. All right. So listen, how weird am I? I we had Amelia Earhart stop by. I asked Napoleon to stop by. Matthew Perry, thank you. You're always welcome, brother. Sorry we can talk to you some more. Luana, thank you so much for bringing these people forward and giving me guidance. I love everyone. The energy's been a little bit crazy. When you get the chills, ask why. Because people have a lot of chills lately. I know I've been having the chills lately. And I'm always like, think about what is it that you're reading or what is it that you're looking at that's causing the chills to happen? It's kind of fascinating. Or who is here? Because the loved ones are very close. This full moon was a very powerful full moon recently. And your loved ones are so close. So just want to say that. No, absolutely. Jennifer, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for that advice. Pay attention to the chills. We love that. We love you. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank and you. Then have a great wherever you're going. And, and you be know. in Mexico for a retreat with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, Forget say hello to Joe for us. We appreciate that. All right. Very good. Okay. Love you. Safe travels. Bienvenidos. Bye. <laughs> love, love. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschafer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Amazon Prime.